Hello and welcome to the Terran Space Academy, where we help prepare you for a bright future in the space industry. Almost everyone who watches this channel is dreaming of a future in space. If not for us, then for our children. Most of us believe that for humanity to continue to grow, we need new frontiers to test ourselves against, and new worlds for our descendants, so that Earth will not be the only home for humanity. There are many that think this dream is impossible, that the dangers of space travel and the environments on other worlds will leave us trapped forever on this one small planet. But human beings are resourceful. There are those who have lived full lives that wish to contribute to the next generation and are willing to risk their health and safety to go to these worlds and build the needed infrastructure. Radiation can be shielded against. One meter of ice on the moon or Mars would fully protect a habitat. Recycling technology can dramatically reduce wasted resources. Genetic engineering and artificial intelligence, merging biology with technology, can produce self-sustaining biomes almost anywhere. Human beings need somewhere that they can try new things, somewhere that the individual matters. Only on a frontier must we all work together as a family to survive. But there is one force humanity has not conquered. Gravity. The adult human body does not respond well to a low-gravity environment. But adult humans are very resilient, and we have technologies to combat these effects. Not just the exercise equipment on the ISS, but other interventions. It is possible to give medications that reduce the levels of myostatin in our bodies, allowing our muscles to grow by up to 20% and to remain strong without constant exercise. There is even a chemical identified recently that when injected into the bloodstream triggers a workout response, as if someone had just engaged in intense exercise, strengthening the lungs, heart, and muscles. And we have medications like alendronate that trigger osteoblasts to strengthen our bones. The problem is, none of these interventions can be used on children. How can we possibly have a self-sustaining human civilization on another world, like Mars, if we cannot safely raise our children there? Is it even possible for human beings to reproduce in low-gravity environments? You may be surprised to know that this most basic of questions has not even been addressed, much less answered, by any of the world's space agencies. Some of the reasons NASA has not addressed this are probably political. Studies involving reproduction in space, especially those that would use embryos, can be very problematic, according to insiders there. Private organizations will need to stand up and answer these questions for us. It does us no good to build massive spaceships and transport thousands of people to off-world outposts, hoping to found self-sustaining societies if people cannot safely conceive and raise children at these destinations. To answer this question, one man dedicated himself to the science of human conception in space. This is Dr. Egbert Edelbroek. Dr. Edelbroek is from the Netherlands, and he started his company in one of the coolest office buildings on Earth. That company is called Spaceborne United, and it has set out to answer this most important question for all of us. Can human fertilization occur in low-gravity environments? To answer this question, Spaceborne United has designed this. This is the ARTIS Experimental Artificial Gravity In Vitro Fertilization Experiment. This device is following on basic research performed by two other orbital experiments. The first of these was called BAMSAT. BAMSAT was supported by the Swedish National Space Agency, the German Aerospace Center, and the European Space Agency through research from Cranfield University. The name stands for Biology, Astrobiology, Medicine, and Materials Science on Satellite. The satellite did not actually go into space, but was put on a balloon system called BEXIS for balloon experiments for university students, and was launched from Sweden up to the stratosphere. There, a disk with multiple chambers was rotated to allow nutrient supply and sample extraction, 
from biological experiments at the edge of the disk. Parts of the disk can also be spun to bring a microscope or spectrometer to bear on the experiment. Another satellite that looked at an aspect of this question was the SJ-10 by China. The SJ-10 Reusable Orbitals Laboratory was discussed in this lesson. The satellite can take experiments into space and bring them back. The SJ-10 launched on 6 April 2016 and was loaded with more than 6,000 mouse embryos. It spent seven days in orbit. Then a fixative was administered to some of the embryos after 72 hours, preserving these at that stage of development. Then scientists on Earth remotely viewed microscopic images of the rest sent down by telemetry as they continued to develop. All of these cells went from the two-cell stage to differentiated blastocysts in the microgravity of orbit, exactly as they would have on Earth. The satellite was capable of re-entry and parachute landing and was brought down in Inner Mongolia, where the embryos were retrieved and compared to controls. These control embryos were allowed to continue to develop on Earth. While these experiments were important in proving that cells can develop in the microgravity environment of low Earth orbit, there was a big question left unanswered. Can mammalian eggs, especially human, be fertilized through normal means in a low-gravity environment? The embryos sent up by China had been fertilized on Earth. You might think that NASA would have settled this long ago, but they did not. In 1992, during the STS-47 mission aboard the Space Shuttle Endeavour, fertilized frog eggs had been observed and it was noted that they developed normally, while tadpoles hatched on Earth and flown to space had a 50% mortality rate but there was no way to know if this was from the stress of launch and return or the microgravity environment itself. Other experiments addressed development in space, but none had asked the most important question. Under what conditions can human egg fertilization occur in space? Is it even possible in zero gravity? And what about lunar or Martian gravity? If there is a minimum necessary gravity, what is it? Or can humans conceive with effectively no gravity at all? To answer this question, Dr. Edelbrock put together a team of scientists from around the world. This mission starts with a small satellite launch provider, one that has developed an innovative concierge launch service company. It will be very important when you are planning a biological space experiment to have late access to the payload. You can't just put living cells in a satellite and let them sit for days and weeks. Dr. Edelbrook is researching small satellite launch providers to find one willing to work with the Spaceborne team to allow that late payload access. Spaceborne doesn't want to be one of 12 satellites on a rideshare if they can have their own dedicated launch service. Next, we see the experiment in action. The experiment is enclosed in the return capsule, built by Independence X Aerospace, founded by Dr. Izmir Yamin in Malaysia. This capsule has a hydrogen power cell allowing plenty of energy to run the experiment. Then comes the hard part, creating something entirely new. The team needed to re-engineer existing IVF technology, especially an embryo incubator, as a spacecraft life support system with an artificial gravity simulator that would be carried into space with first mouse eggs and later human. These eggs would be spun at a set speed to create artificial gravity equal to that of the Earth. 9.8 meters per second squared. If fertilization occurs at a normal rate at Earth gravity in space, and ground-based genetic tests are okay, we can then send up another experiment and create the equivalent of Mars gravity, then lunar, and finally microgravity. Why not just start with microgravity? You could, but if fertilization failed, you would not know if some other factor, like radiation or launch stress, had caused the problem. By starting at Earth gravity, we can compare fertilization rates on Earth with those in the experimental Earth gravity simulator. Once we have controlled for other variables, we can be certain that the effect we see is due to gravity changes only. The launch provider selected to accomplish this mission will be announced soon. While the orbital return capsule will be provided by Independence X Aerospace from Malaysia, the satellite system itself is being built by Frontier Space Technologies in the United Kingdom. Here's Dr. Egbert Edelbrook at the Research Center in the United Kingdom, examining the work that has been accomplished on the satellite system. This will truly be a global effort, fitting for a mission that will answer a question important for all of humanity. 
Can human families start in space, on the moon, and on Mars? We all hope that the answer will be yes. That our descendants will not be confined to this one planet, but will be able to utilize the resources of the entire solar system to create worlds more beautiful than we can imagine. We want to offer our gratitude to these bold pioneers who dedicate their time and resources for the betterment of all humanity. Stay safe and good luck. Ad Astra Proterra.